So welcome all of you from wherever you are out in the world. Um, one of the most amazing things about this weird time is that we are able to invite people from literally all over the world to be here with us. And um, if you've been to one of these events, this is the third of three of our salon events, which are these intimate um, views into the lives of uh, a handful of our artists. We've had about 80 of our artists signed up at plus level and most of them participated. We divide them into three of these salons. This is our third one. This is really one of those COVID blessings that we are able to continue to support artists in the Bay Area and that you are able to visit with us and see them and hear them talk about their amazing work. I am Joan Madonna. I am the executive director of Artspan and we are here to connect artists to the art appreciating public. Thank you to the staff, thank you to the board, and thank you all for being here because we are doing this work because of the artist and it takes you to show up and support the work that they do. To all of you and to all of the artists and to the entire world, it is art that brings us together. It is the universal language. For 40,000 years, artists have been really doing the difficult work to make sure that our stories are told, our passions, our fears, our delights are captured and turned into art. So thank you all for being here. And um, next up, we're going to talk to Ashley Voss. And Ashley is really an incredible member of our community. She has worked with dozens of arts band artists. She hosts her own shows in her gorgeous Mission District Gallery. Very shortly after she opened it, we had COVID. I think she's been able to reopen it, which is amazing. She's been a juror for both our auction and our Amplify Awards. And she is also an arts advocate. I know that. I know she cares deeply about the arts and about all of you artists and about all of us who care about arts. And she has really created a gallery that is dedicated to showcasing work by emerging and mid-career artists. And she does both solo and thematically organized group shows. And her emphasis is on new contemporary street art, outsider art, lowbrow, and pop surrealism. I mean, how great is that, right? Don't we all need more of that, especially now? She was a member of our outreach committee, and she also is involved with the Emerging Arts Professionals San Francisco Bay Area. And in addition to all that, and this is things I really was blown away, she does really amazing writing about art, and she's done a lot of it. Pelican Bomb and Art Practical Places, those have landed and many other places. So, Ashley, um, why don't you tell me a little bit about you from your perspective and you know what you want this evening to be like? Hey everybody. Well, first of all, thank you, Joanne, for the nice introduction. Uh, thank you, Artspan team, for putting this event on. I'm really excited. Uh, thank you to all the participating artists for being here. I'm excited to see where the conversation takes us and to all the art lovers watching. Um, I'm really excited and just very grateful to host the final event for the Artspan Open Studio season. We're gonna have such a fun time. Like Joan said, I've been involved with the organization in various capacities since I've moved here uh, three years ago from New Orleans. And what I love about Artspan is that not only does the organization provide opportunities and resources for artists, but they also make artwork more accessible for the community. And that can take many forms from purchasing work from the local artists to meeting artists and just starting the conversation, getting to know the artists and making friends at all of the fabulous and fun events that they host. Uh, you know, we all have to start somewhere in our art journey and Artspan is a great place to start. Uh, so to move into the discussion and the idea behind the theme, like Joan mentioned, I opened Boss Gallery a year ago and I could never have planned or anticipated like any of us that after six months I would have to shut my doors uh, and of course as a new business owner that was pretty stressful it was a stressful time for all of us I mean there's no playbook for this and we're all still learning and we're learning together how to did uh, how to pivot into this digital space and what really got me through, which I am very thankful for, is the community, such as Artspan, and just knowing that we're all in this together. And I really admire Artspan's ability to transform this Open Studios event into a virtual event. 
And, you know, we all want to connect. We all want to see people. We all want to feel part of something. And as we're in it together, as we're figuring out how this looks, either in a socially distant space or a virtual space, uh, the discussion prompt is I'd like to hear from all the participating artists a little bit about their practice and how they're building and finding community in the virtual space. So thank you again. I'm really excited to get the conversation going. And if we're ready, I'll turn it to Diane, who will help navigate the artist discussion. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Diane Hoffman. I'm the artist. Artist Services Manager for Artspan, and it is my honor tonight to be able to introduce each of our artists. Our first ar artist this evening is Afatasi, the artist. Afatasi, please share with us. I'm Afatasi, the artist. I am a textile artist born and raised here in San Francisco. I identify as Afro-Polynesian. My mother is from Western Samoa, and my father is a Black American, and I have always been drawn to textiles. Um, my mother always had to get traditional wear made here in America. So I was always going with her to like fabric stores and things like that. Um, and so I was just always very much drawn to fabric. And as I grew up and um, was le learning more about my identity, I was drawn to African fabrics. So I work with a lot of African fabrics from the entire diaspora. I source from women particularly. Um, because I feel like that's like a very nice thing to do. And um, I wanna speak about this. This is called Paliali Imo Basquiat, which is a dedication piece to Basquiat, who is one of my favorite artists. And the textiles here are African and Polynesian in origin. This part right here is a Polynesian bark cloth, which is called Siapo in my language. And it's a women's artwork. And it's also the sails that, um, that were the, on the ships of Polynesian uh, ships that got us from island to island. I would say that in my practice, I also, I pray over my fabrics. I um, thank the ancestors for drawing me to fabrics. Uh, there are just fabrics that I'm just very much drawn to. And I just feel that there's so many stories that I draw from my childhood. Thank you, Atasi. You sounded wonderful. Appreciate your words. Our next artist that will be speaking this evening is Roberta Ahrens. Hello, Roberta. So the piece that you see here is Malibu. Um, I'm very honored to have received the Amplify Award for this piece this year, 2020, San Francisco. Um, these pieces, this, this and all of my botanicals are made from a handmade um, surface I make. It's, it's fabric with mudded layers on it. And so I, it's a very physical um, application. It's 3D. Uh, these, th I consider these pieces sculpture. Uh, if you look behind me here, this is a eight foot by eight foot piece. It's a big mural, but it hangs like a tapestry same material as this silver piece here. Um, I'm having so much fun working with this material. Just get, get in touch with me and I can show it to you in person. It's called crepe linen. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be having a show in San Francisco in, uh, from November through January down in Dogpatch, which I'm very, very proud of. And I invite everybody to connect with me and uh, at robertaarns.com to uh, if you want to sign up for my email and find out more about my events. I'm, I'm just um, so happy to have this big show. It's going to be a solo show, 20 pieces or more. Um, our next artist this evening is Jill Andre. Hi, Jill. Hi there. So I'm uh, in my Mission District studio right now. You can see from my painting that I do figurative painting. Um, I've been drawing from live models for about 20 years. I have stacks and stacks of sketchbooks that I revisit to um, get sources for my, my paintings. And there's a, a group called the Sketchboard Community here in San Francisco, and they used to meet at the Monument, and they went online on Zoom almost immediately. And I have to say, I'm really surprised at, at um, how well that, that worked for me. I didn't have to schlep my materials all over the place. I could make all the noise that I needed to make when I work. 
and I'm glad that I can still support the, the artist models and commune with other artists and we share our work online. Um, and then recently I participated in the gold event for Artspan and I learned something about myself because I'm usually um, work alone is that I really enjoyed having people come into my space um, and chat with me because I painted the whole time. So I had these small panels, there we go, little six by six inch panels. Oops, and I'm not on yet, I'm showing you, but I don't know that I'm on yet. Um, these six by six inch panels. And so I painted 12 of these during the uh, art span event, and that was fabulous. So I, I'd love to hang out with people more. And I did get a chance to see Ashley's um, uh, gallery before it closed last year. I went to a stencil cutting workshop and it was really wonderful. And they supplied all the exacto knives and such. And I would love to do some online classes. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jill. Um, our next artist this evening is Pamela Axelson. Hi, I want to thank you guys at Artspan for inviting us all to participate in this salon tonight. I, I, I want to say I always enjoy the questions and comments that come through open studios and uh, those who visit our studios each year. And the thoughts that, that I wanna share in my little talk tonight um, have all come out of the discussions that I've had in my studio with, with the people who come. I do wanna also say that this is a drawing that you're looking at, but I also work between sculpture and drawing and there's a large piece of my recently finished clay pieces in the background. Anyway, onward to say my drawings encompass the elements time the passage of time, evolution, change, and loss. These large six foot by six foot drawings allow me to explore and understand visual memory. I lay a layer up to three drawings on top of each other to observe which part of each drawing remain visible or partially visible in the final drawing. The first drawing is the foundation, but it's not the guide for the drawings layered above it. People always ask, well, how do you do these? And so the drawings are done on thin, semi-transparent, gumpy paper using various types of black and walnut ink and washes applied with brush and pen. I start them by applying randomly placed marks, linear elements, and build the drawing from there. To finish the drawings, I draw a grid over the page, cut the page into the rectangular pieces created by the grid, and then reassemble the rectangular pieces in order by adhering them to silk organza to preserve their transparency. The second drawing is layered over the top, being treated the same way of the first one. The final drawing is a dialogue between past and present, what is preserved and what is lost, and what changes as the drawing progresses. Each final drawing is, is truly a surprise. And again, thank you, Diane and Artsban and for your incredible work on the salons and uh, the booths. And I want to wish everybody good health. And I hope to see you out here at the Noon Inn, which is where I'm talking from out of Pier 70. Thanks. Thank you so much, Pamela. Our next artist, Tim Baskerville. Um, Hello, Tim. I just realized I've been uh, associated with Artspan um, for some 30 years now, as it turns out. Um, almost as long as I've been doing uh, photography, um, night photography is my um, specialty. Uh, long exposures in the, the dead of night in uh, semi-abandoned spaces. Um, this uh, image that you see here was done on Mare Island, the former shipyard um, where I live nowadays. Um, these huge cranes with all this is mostly available light. There's not a lot of uh, what we call light painting going on. There is a little bit of red at the top, but uh, very strange, surreal colors uh, where you wouldn't expect colors <laughs> at night. And that's uh, my principal concern is, uh, is night photography. I host a, a website uh, that's a gathering of um, artists and, and teaching uh, educators. Uh, all to do with night photography. Wonderful, Tim. Thank you so much. Our next artist, which is Mr. Johnny Botts. Hello, Johnny. Thank you all for doing this. I think it's wonderful that you're giving us all this opportunity, and I really appreciate it. Um, the piece that I'm 
showing on the screen there is my companion piece to another similar one that I was fortunate enough to have in the De Young exhibit, which was so cool. You can tell that I like a lot of color. I have uh, four new robots that I have been painting this year. And there's one character to represent each of the words, happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. My brand is really happy, colorful art because I want to create um, art that is uplifting and positive and stuff that I would like to have around me. Um, I believe whatever you put ar around yourself affects your thoughts and actions. So, so that's why I do what I do. For me, artists bu building community in the virtual environment is not a whole lot different than it is before the virtual environment. I think it's about showing up and participating and sharing ideas with each other. Um, I remember at the, the 50th uh, anniversary of, for my husband's parents, one of the toasts given to them was, you can count on Gus and Gladys to show up. So any party, anything they were invited to, they showed up and they were supportive. They went to punk rock concerts, they went to everything. Um, so I think it's the same for us now, except most of these events are virtual. So I, I just encourage everyone to attend these events, comment on people's posts and participate. Wonderful, Johnny, we appreciate that so much. And now we'll move on to our next artist, which is Felipe Colina. First of all, thank you to you and Joan and Ashley for organizing this. The piece that uh, we're talking about that I have here on the screen is called the Roxa Ocean Beach. We're all here from the Bay Area um, and we know about Ocean Beach. Ocean Beach is one of my favorite subjects because um, you can be 20 blocks out from Ocean Beach and you have no, and it can be foggy and you have no idea how it's gonna actually look um, once you actually get to the, to the coast. And I've painted this several times in a way, it's kind of the way Monet used haystacks to start to learn about nuances in color and in nature. And I'm not comparing myself to Monet, just saying how this is a, how I use Ocean Beach. But to wrap it up, the reason I chose this piece right now is because um, I think during these difficult times, I think it's very important to remember that under behind gray skies, there's still golden lights. And um, when I went that day to the beach, even though it was very cloudy, um, there was still this piercing gold. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Felipe. We appreciate it. Our next artist that we will move on to is uh, Renee DiCarlo. Hi. Hi. Thank you, Team Arts fan. So while my work is uh, what I consider to be a form of life drawing, I record life around me in very precise moments of time and draw like the, I record the bumps in the road, the turbulence on an airplane, and the chaotic patterns that people move in. By letting my pen follow the, my eye or trace the movement of my body in space, I am recording my experiences, which to the unknowing eye usually resemble a messy scribble or scratch on paper. These initial drawings are actually the foundation or point of departure of a much more complex and intricate journey ahead filled with layers and layers of repetitious mark making and explosions of pigment, discovery of new relationships between materials and adaptations that were likely unpredicted. By using traditional printmaking techniques, I build each piece upon layers of those foundation drawings. Um, I add pigments haphazardly and allow them to coalesce with the lines and the surface in their own way and play in the residue of those pigments to further deepen the colors, create composition and to to define each space between the lines. Uh, so Ashley, I wanna thank you for hosting and for posing uh, the question about virtual space and community. So when COVID happened, I was in a unique position as I was hosting an exhibition of my own of over a hundred local women artists. So when the shutdown happened, I was bound to that community and tethered to them and desperately trying to figure out how to get through it all and keep the dream alive of the show. Um, I see myself as a connector of people and um, moved my studio into a storefront space about three years ago for more exposure and to, more, to have more opportunity for more community. Um, I, I sort of live the open studios model every day of my life and I believe that there's so much power in meeting people who are inspired by discovering art um, accidentally. 
And though I rely on technology in the virtual realm to support my business and to keep in touch with my community, I, I can't rely on it solely and have very little interest in that, actually. Um, I believe that technology can help us connect and stay in touch with one another, um, especially right now, like this, this is amazing. Um, however, I have to have face-to-face -face time with people and I'm, I'm really looking forward to actually being able to see um, people in the, in the person, in the flesh, even if it's behind windows and masks. Um, I think that this has proven that artists are all essential and that people want to see that we're working and that we are surviving this and that we're still here. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, we're going to move on to our next artist, uh, who is a, an artist collaborative team that goes by ELOS, and they are Andriana Davila and Italina Lopez. Hello, good night. Um, I'm here alone today. Italina sadly is traveling, so she could not join us, but I'm here representing. My name is Andreina Davila, and as Diane said, I'm, I'm part of a two person collaborative project that has been going on for a few years now, since 2015. So we're both a Venezuelan artists that have been working in the Bay Area for 12 years now. And in our own practices, we all have our own studios and do our own thing. But in 2015, we decided to start working together under the name of a third artist named Ilus. And the way that we do this is um, we take turns in the paintings. So um, this example of the painting we, we, we sent is one of our newest examples of um, a painting we did. But I'll show you here, um, I have some, some examples like, the way do we do it is that I start painting. So I will like have a, a piece like this that is an abstract piece. And before it's done, when I really like it and I feel like I love it, I will pass it on to Italena. And she will decide what kind of, we, oh, oh, sorry, I forgot to say that. We will have, uh, um, I'll take care of color and texture in the main composition, and Italena will take care of the drawing of an animal. So we had like few rules. And then she uses this kind of style uh, in her work. And then she will, like, we will interpose, she will just take the abstract environment that I gave her, and then, decide what kind of animal and where she will put it, and then she'll give it back to me. And, there, and then we go back and forth until we're happy with the piece. And something like this will come, or like what you see, um, like the, the lions, uh, she gave it back to me and I kept working on it, and then we, get back, we went back and forth many times. Um, it's been a surprise to us because when, I, when, when we do the exchange, we don't know what is going to happen. So it's really exciting in a different way of working and kind of like refreshing from our own introspection. Really okay. appreciate it from you yeah. and give our best to Idalina. Our next artist moving forward is going to be Nina Fambuni. Hello, Nina. Hi, everyone. How are you? And thank you for doing this. Before I start speaking about my piece, I just want to say I sold my Amplify Awards piece and someone even ordered a print. I got so many emails about that piece, so thank you, Arts Fan. Um, the piece that I'm highlighting today is all about responding to changes in the world. So, um, you know, I've been stuck at home and I have all these newspapers and magazines and stuff around the house and I didn't want to throw them away. And all of a sudden, I remembered my love for collage. So... I started painting these faces because, you know, I'm from Nigeria and Nigeria is very cultural. So we have um, a lot of interesting fabrics and dressing and cultures and customs where women cover their faces. So like what we are going through in society now, having to wear the mask kind of reminded me of the culture. So I was responding to the changes in the world by making this piece and I was trying to reinvent myself as an artist and trying to use stuff around the house to, uh, to make a collage. So this is a combination of collage, it's painting, and I sealed it up in epoxy resin. I have the piece over here. It is, you see how like kind of shiny that is? So you can see that the resin is on it. And um, I made um, a whole series of them. I have a bunch in my studio and it's just me playing around with magazines and cutouts and in a way I feel like I'm stealing jewelry and bags and little things and trying to reinvent my own art and that's it. 
thank you so much, Nia. It's always good to hear from you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We're going to move on to our next artist, who is Beth Fine. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to thank ArtSpan for including artists like myself who don't live in the city of San Francisco. I live in the East Bay. Um, so it's a great opportunity. And like everyone else, the pandemic has completely changed my life. Sheltering in place has altered my, the physical space and the community that contextualizes my art practice. These dream prints that you can see behind me in the quarantine dream on the screen were all made during um, this pandemic period. They capture the emotional stress of working in isolation while the world is spinning out of control with COVID-19 and the political chaos that surrounds us. These image, images layer my subconscious photographs, pinhole photographs, and my hand-pulled etchings and screen prints. This year has been a time to experiment within the limitations imposed by working alone and not as an artist in residence at Kala Art Institute. It's not possible for me to create in the same way, so I've been working with hand printing collaborations via Zoom and the U.S. Post Office and digital, digitally altering my imagery in Photoshop. My art practice encompasses encompasses printmaking, performance, sculpture, and installation. I'm continually exploring the transient nature of movement and integrating this sensibility into my two-dimensional art. Static and ephemeral elements filter into many aspects of my work. I'm intrigued by the crossroads of unpredictability and necessity, the allure of new encounters and a distinct sense of place. The universality of simple, ordinary experience intrigues me as it intersects with uncertainty, which is exactly where we all are right now. So thank you, Artspan. Thank you, Beth. That was lovely. Uh, we do appreciate it. And we'll move on to our next artist, which is Lady Henzi. Hey, everyone. Uh, I am Lady Henzi. You can also call me Brit, but just never call me ma'am. Uh, I'm coming to you from my Soma studio. I'm a mixed media artist and I'm also a muralist. And the painting that's right behind me and the one that you're looking at right now is titled Fruit Stripe. I made it on a homemade panel and I used spray paint for this piece. And I made it during quarantine and I used the materials that are being used to board up the shops all around the city. It's kind of like my homage to the time we're in. And you know, if I'm not painting outside, I'm painting in here on the same materials. So. I also name my paintings after the things that I love most in this world. So that's candy, music, and movies. Um, uh, my art is all framed through the lens of recovery. I explore my existence living in the reality with all of you. So one of uh, the themes in my art is control or the lack of it. I really only have control when it comes to my art practice. And even then that's kind of iffy. So part of me like really likes things orderly and perfect and neat. And life isn't like that. Um, so when shit hits the fan, I have an option to like freak out or I can sit back and look at my past experiences and really and like rely on them to get me through the period of uncomfortability. Uh, it's calming for me to work like this in this like really neat orderly fashion. This is one of my favorite pieces I made this year. The colors uh, make me feel some kind of way. And then for uh, Ashley's topic, I love this topic. Um, the past seven months have actually been really amazing in a lot of ways, unexpectedly. Uh, I spend a lot of time on my home away from home, which is the studio and also Instagram. Um, I love Instagram. I've made friends all over the world. I follow mostly other artists and galleries and I promote my friends and art shows and their events and I show up at them virtually. I also buy art, I hang it and I showcase it on my Instagram. It's also my main platform for learning and teaching. I took up wheat pasting during the stay in place and I learned a bunch and had a blast with artists that I met on Instagram. Being virtual isn't ideal. I grew up pre-internet, but I found it's an amazing tool to see art I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, the ability to form these really cool relationships with people without ever meeting them has been really epic. Thank you for having me. Thank you, lady. At this point, we're gonna take um, just a brief intermission and um, redirect to our at this point we're going to take um, just a brief intermission and um, redirect to our salon host Miss Ashley Voss to hear her thoughts on the commentary that we've heard so far hi thank you everyone for sharing 
your creative process so far. The beauty of Open Studios is that we all have the ability to see such a diverse array of work from local artists, from gorgeous textiles to the ephemeral mixed media works and photography. The Johnny Botts' whimsical paintings of robots, definitely fun to surround yourself with. I also agree that the work that you invite into your home has the power to affect your mood, and so why not make it something positive, especially during this time. Um, Renee DiCarlo, I just want to say thank you also for being such a fabulous neighbor. I love having your space so close to me, especially the drawing room and the annex. And you mentioned that technology is a tool that helps us stay connected. However, I also agree with you that nothing compares to in-person interactions, but like Lady Henzi said towards the end, um, Instagram and social media is also a great way to form relationships with people who are outside of you know, your immediate space. And at Voss Gallery, we also use Instagram quite a bit and sell quite a bit of work through that platform. Um, it's also really interesting that people are using it to teach classes as well. So I think there's other ways to embrace it as an educational tool. Thank you so much, Ashley. Uh, we really appreciate you co-hosting with us this evening. Moving on to our next group of artists, um, we will be hearing from Steve Javiel. Hi, Steve. Hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, so this piece uh, came about, usually I start off with like small little sketches. Um, and then usually like I'll pick and choose which one I kind of feel. And this one was just kind of like one of those pieces where like everything just kind of came together. My gut was just telling me just to like, just go for it. Don't think, just go create, paint it. And I think, I think one of the things too is like uh, my, I think I'm more in a positive state of mind, even when things haven't gone the way as, as, uh, as planned to. Um, I mean, just staying positive has kept me just going, you know, kept me going, uh, kept me doing what I love. And I feel like the colors that I use in this piece uh, represent that. Like every time I come into my studio, I see it hanging on the wall and it just makes me happy. It makes me happy. Um, and I'm hoping that that's, that's, what it, that's what it does to other people. Like as you know, the collectors, you know, bring a smile, bring you joy. And at the same time, it's like I'm learning about myself. Yeah, wonderful. It's a beautiful piece. Thank you so much, Steve. And we'll move on to our next artist, who is J.L. King. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Artspan. Thanks, Diane. Uh, I think virtually some of the things that I've been doing to build community is just trying more to um, participate in some of the virtual shows and um, attend them and see them. Um, I think it's very important to uh, support the arts and artists and makers during this time as they're often considered non-essential to those that don't make their living um, this way. And yet they're very important to those same people because that's what makes these cities and communities desirable to be in. So um, uh, that's, that's how I see it. And uh, um, I think during this time, although it has turned uh, a big part of my life changed a lot of it. Um, I think I've remained pretty consistent with how I do my work. I'm not sure consciously how it has changed um, the subjects or the way that I do my work. It, it's, I think it's the one thing that has remained pretty steady for me. So um, touching on this piece here that I did, um, that I submitted, um, one of the common threads is uh, that I like to spotlight the underdog, um, things that are go unnoticed and are not um, really considered or revered in most ways. And I like to glorify them and uh, turn them into the star for the moment in my piece. Um, and that, if, as you can see in this piece, you know, the snail, the ants, uh, torn paper is not usually um, looked at or considered, but I like to change it and the perspective so that you notice those details. And uh, um, I think that's a common thread in most of my work. This is a piece in oil. And this is my timer, two minute timer, so that I made sure I wasn't gonna go over. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> that's great. 
Uh, we'll move on to our next artist, who is Ron King. Hello, Ron. Hi. Well, I, well, I'd like to uh, thank uh, all of Artsman. Yeah, it turns out that this is my second year uh, in the open studios. Uh, this uh, particular painting is based on a experience that my family and I had when we were traveling through Bosnia back in 2007. And it was a, a road between Croatia and uh, Banja Luka. That particular area was an area that it was uh, primarily ethnic Serb. And during the Serbian war, which was about uh, 11 years prior to the time we were there, a lot of these mosques were burned down. And this was kind of a striking image as we were driving along the road and we had to stop and take some photographs of it. My first take on it was it looked like a missile ready to fight. Uh, fight back uh, whatever the storm was that was coming toward it. And then as I started trying to going, going to go to the painting itself, um, I was trying to capture that feeling that I had when I was there. And I had the, the photographs that I could use to, to get some of the details, but really worked on getting the, the, the feeling of this storm that was rising and the kind of the malevolence that uh, you, would, you would feel in that, that particular area. After I looked at this and spent a little bit of time with it, it definitely seemed to be a place of, of hope, a safe place in the, the path of a storm. Um, thank you for, uh, for sharing that with us. Our next artist who uh, is Linda Larson. Oh, hi, everybody. I'm like here at Hunter's Point. Uh, this painting is a little bit of a departure for me. I was fortunate enough to go to Europe last fall, and I saw many of these Baroque flower Dutch paintings that I'd only seen in reproduction in full glorious flesh. It is said that the Dutch lost their collective minds over tulips because their exotic sensuous beauty really did a number on these austere Calvinists and me. So thanks to sexy tulips, an entire new art category was given a lot of legitimacy at a time when most art was focused on religious allegory. So after seeing these 400 year old paintings were so vivid and complex, even centuries later, I was inspired to capture my own favorite sensual blooms, my homage, so ambitious. However, I'm slow, changed my mind a lot, and what started as something very straightforward, I thought morphed into a painting of decomposition and constantly wilting subjects interesting but too depressing during COVID. So I ended up adding a few local weeds in my own house plants so at least they will live on here when I inevitably kill them down the road. To address Ashley's question, I have talked to so many artists online that I may not have had the courage or opportunity to meet in person. I've also attended a lot of artist talks from all over the country. I love this and up until COVID I probably attended four in my entire life. They were always scheduled weirdly and we were also busy in the past. So formats like, the, formats like this one are also an excellent opportunity to learn about our immediate community. Instagram Live and the process videos I stumbled across are all very inspiring, even if they are a wee bit intimidating. Oh, and I liked actually the COVID challenge because I did buy a few small pieces from artists I had no previous relationship with. And receiving these elaborately wrapped small works in the mail was thrilling. And these pieces will always remind me of this strange time. So thank you, Artsman. It's been a blast. Thank you. That's awesome. Okay. Um, our next artist is Paul Madonna. Hello, Paul. Hello, Diane. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Artsman, thank you so much. This has been an incredible series. And everybody who's shown up tonight, thank you for, for taking the time. Really appreciate it. My name is Paul Madonna. I'm an artist and a writer. I'm predominantly known for my series All Over Coffee, which ran in the San Francisco Chronicle for 12 years. And now I have focused mainly on large scale murals, uh, drawings for galleries and museums, as well as writing books. I actually have two books out right now, um, an illustrated novel called Come to Light, which the wonderful Diane Hoffman also has contributed artwork for, for the entire second volume. And then another book, which I, Spirits of San Francisco, which I made with the author Gary Camilla, who's known for uh, the book Cool Gray City of Love. 
And, uh, you know, I love making books because the, the practice of drawing is, is, uh, takes one part of my brain, one part of thinking, and, uh, and then writing takes a completely different part. And so I like to shift back and forth between these two practices because I feel like they, they give me breaks from each other. I can, uh, I can step away from the drawings and go and write. And then when I come back, I can see the drawings for, for the first time and vice versa with the writing. So I, I'm in my studio right now, which is one of my favorite places to be. But also, you know, I get a lot of my inspiration from drawing on site. And so the, the last thing I'll tell you about is the image that you're looking at on screen here, which is of Coit Tower in San Francisco. And this is featured in the book with uh, Spirits of San Francisco. And uh, it's drawn on site with pen and ink. Okay, I think that's about my time. Thank you everyone so much for coming. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, our next artist that'll be joining us this evening is Claire Medigou. Hello, Claire. Hi, hi, Diane. Hi, everyone. It's Claire Medigou. And um, I'm a San Francisco native with a studio at Hunters Point Shipyard. My art is mostly representational. I strive for fluidity and beauty of form. My work is often conceptual. Lately, I've been fascinated by the field of energy and how frequency, vibration, and intent have the ability to affect us on a cellular level. The three images I'm sharing are from my Solfeggio scale monoprint series. It is theorized that each Solfeggio tone has the ability to balance and heal a chakra. My intent is to visually connect each of the seven tones, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, to each of the seven main chakras. The monoprints are created by layering multiple substrates. Most layers are printed by hand rubbing ink onto thin paper. The process of hand rubbing ink onto paper is very labor intensive. However, it allows each print to have a unique textural and ethereal quality. The final images are then shinkled onto archival paper. In answer to one of Ashley's questions, why is art more essential now? I believe a home filled with handcrafted items has great potential to help us find balance. Though through the science of kinesiology, it has been proven that when a person looks at something that has been handcrafted, he will calibrate at a higher frequency. When looking at a reproduction of a handcrafted item, he will cast well, but not as high. And last, I want to share a quote by Dr. David Hawkins, author of Power Versus Force. He beautifully states, dedicated artists put love into their work, and there is great power in both the craft of man's touch and human originality. And now what's really cool is technology. We are seeing through technology just how true that statement is. Wonderful, Claire. Thank you, Thank you very much. Our next artist this evening is Deborah Reebok. Hello, Deborah. Hi, Diane. Thank you. And thank you for everybody that's attending. And thank you for Artspan. I'm a San Francisco based abstract photographer that enjoys transforming images of modern urban architecture and nature into unusual shapes, uh, geometric forms and stunning designs. Abstract photography enables me to convey the richness of our everyday surroundings using multiple perspectives with the interplay of movement, light, shape, and dimension. And I think one of the things that COVID has taught me is that there is so much art around us every day if we take the time to look. Earlier this year, I had the opportunity to head up a panel, a discussion at the Commonwealth Club about art as positive energy. My intention is to encourage the viewer to um, take a look at the piece of art in a different way to lose their common interpretation of the object and transcend boundaries for an expanded outlook. This photograph is actually a building that was in Vancouver that I was at the right time of day and um, I represented it in a round form. Round as if all of us in the art community are holding hands. People think it's actually wood, but it is not. If you'd like to see some more of my artwork, please visit my website at deborahreebach.com. And please take a moment every day to slow down and see the art that surrounds us and enriches us and does raise our energy to a new level. 
Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. We're going to move on to our next artist, Heather Robinson. Hi, Heather. Hi, um, I'm Heather Robinson. I'm an abstract painter inspired by traditional textile patterns. Um, I layer numerous patterns in my paintings um, to kind of contrast the, the orderly nature of the design and the uh, potential chaos of paint. So I really enjoy that kind of liveliness of spontaneity of paint. Um, and I think a lot of my work really works with that order of the pattern and the, and the unknown of the paint. Um, in most of my pieces, I start with a pattern piece of fabric, um, which I apply to a panel and then work layers of paint and medium over. Um, and um, in a lot of them, I use a stenciled geometric pattern and I put a thick acrylic medium, which um, creates a raised texture on the painting. Uh, this painting here is, um, the background is a traditional Japanese pattern called Asanoha. It's uh, um, like a hemp leaf pattern. It's that kind of hexagonal pattern. And I um, contrasted it with a, a very similar traditional American pattern as a tumbling block pattern. So I was working with those two pieces in that. Um, as far as Ashley's question, uh, I've been really impressed about how so many artists have pivoted so quickly in the last seven months. Um, I belong to a few virtual arts communities that I've belonged to for a while. And the ones I belong to have become even more important since it's all has started. Um, so many people have been sharing their expertise about what's working for them and helping people set up websites and uh, fundraising for political causes and personal causes, helping other artists out, um, you know, online exhib exhibitions and virtual events. Um, I feel like artists have really rallied and of course a lot of galleries and organizations that support the arts have too, like, like Artsband, thank you so much. Um, I think that people are realizing that life is just a lot poorer without art and without artists. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Uh, our next artist joining us is Sawyer Rose. Hi, Sawyer. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm Sawyer Rose and I'm a sculptor and installation artist. Uh, the PCC here is from my ongoing series called The Carrying Stones Project, which explores women's work in equity. Um, so what I do is the large scale installation sculptures are built using um, real life work data that I collect from a diverse group of female identifying workers. Um, I collect the data from my project participants about how they spend their time. So like their paid labor and their unpaid labor. And then I translate it into a data visualization sculpture like you see here um, that lets viewers actually read and count uh, the hours that each woman spends at her paid job or her unpaid domestic work or like volunteer work. Um, and then what you don't see here is that once a woman's data sculpture is complete, I take a photographic portrait of her lifting and carrying the sculpture that I made for her. Um, so sort of bearing the burden of her work hours in a real physical way. Um, so one silver lining, I would say, for my work during this 2020 mayhem we've all been experiencing is that since there's so many more virtual shows and virtual, you know, online opportunities like this one, um, I've been able to reach a different audience than I ever would before, especially because, you know, you have to have a pretty special venue to do installation work. Um, so, you know, activist work like I'm doing needs a community to spread its message. And, um, you know, uh, during this year, I've been able, even though all our communities are in upheaval, I've still been able to um, talk about the issues that my project examines, uh, which is essential to the work. It's an essential part of it. So, um, so we carry on. And uh, thank you, Artspan, so much for evenings like this. It's been wonderful seeing all the work. Thank you, Sawyer. We appreciate that. Let's skip ahead to um, Catherine Sherman. I hope so. Hi. What you're seeing now is a picture of me during a one-hour residency at the lab, which took place in February. And little did I know that it's, it's sort of emblematic of where I am now at home by myself, um, not in that big space. But during that residency, I was able to take a lot of quilt tops and process and lay them all out on the floor. And then a photographer friend, Lenore Chen, 
took pictures. Um, and what I like about this photo is just, it, it shows the way I make quilts, which is um, by building components. And if you can see some of the blocks um, in, the, in the lower front are the geometry of the American flag. So since 2016, I've been building what I didn't realize would become a series, but it's, it's a huge series of quilts that take the geometry of the American flag and fill it with different colors and patterns and use fabric from different times and places as a way of examining our story and um, providing hope for me of, of what democracy really could be. Um, so my, my big idea from that has been this idea of there are, there are no new patterns, but there are new ways of filling them. And I call that individual expressions in shared geometries. And that's really impacted the way I build quilts. So I hope you'll go to my website and if you want a trunk show, I can meet you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Catherine. For our next artist is Jay Schumann. Hi, Jay. I came to San Francisco in uh, 1972 and went to the San Francisco Art Institute and studied film with uh, James Broughton and George Kuchar and Gunvor Nelson. And then went, ended up in uh, Los Angeles working in that business for a while. This um, is a uh, painting of a friend of mine who I worked with. And it is a, um, right after the first big Malibu fire, he had moved there and um, this was kind of an homage to that fire and my friend in the film business. Afterwards, I left there and came back to San Francisco to paint and uh, then became um, pretty um, en enamored with the printmaking um, facilities here in the city and did that for, um, and I'm still doing that. Um, I thank you. I thank you all for uh, coming and I appreciate uh, all the work that the um, Artspan folks do. It's a pretty wonderful organization. Wonderful. Thank you, Jay. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to hear from you. Uh, we're coming to the conclusion of tonight's evening. And before we end, I would like to hear again from our salon host, uh, Ashley Voss, about her closing remarks. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Thank you all again to the arts fan team and the participating artists and attendees. Uh, in terms of the discussion question and building community in the virtual realm, um, we heard that just showing up, participating, attending, engaging, sharing, commenting, all the things, you know, you never know who you might meet online, maybe a collector or a new friend. So I hope after this event tonight, uh, everyone leaves feeling inspired about the amazing and diverse arts community that we have in the Bay Area. I loved being able to see all the artists, all the work, such a wide range. It was fabulous. Uh, I encourage everyone to follow up and connect with each other online. Also, if you're not a member of Artspan, I hope you consider joining as an artist, an art lover, or just a community supporter. It's such a great organization. And I look forward to seeing everyone virtually at upcoming events. So thank you all. Um, really, she took the words right out of my mouth. Um, Ashley is an amazing gallerist. Her gallery is in the Mission District. It's really charming. It's very accessible. She helps a lot of emerging and mid-career artists. So please know that the world is a better place because of all the amazing artists you hear tonight. You've heard throughout our entire event, through the years. It really makes a huge difference. It's hard to believe right now, but we are going to come back together. And in the meantime, please, please do what you can to support the artists. Thank you, everybody. And um, we can't do it without you. The art is a wonderful place. So thanks, everybody. <laughs>